Hey, kids, it's the Drive to School podcast. I am Pastor Goodman. My buddy, Pastor Mark Schomberger, is back. How's it going? Good. How you doing? Doing okay. Got the Midwest weather going on right now. <laughs> uh, we are 30 minutes late as we record this because of tornadoes, but, uh, uh, you know, why would that stop y'all from going to school, I guess? Uh, <laughs> oh, boy. Pastor, whenever we hang out, uh, we do wrong questions only. Not not wrong answers, but wrong questions. Because if you ask the wrong question, you're never going to get the right answer. But, well, right. sinners that we are, we, we tend to ask them this way. And and there's a pattern you've kind of pointed out, too. Every single time I ask you a wrong question, what's sort of at the root of it? Um, it it's a confusion of the law and the gospel, uh, really. Um, yeah. Because when I ask a law question, I get a law, law answer. answer. Uh, and so uh, a lot, and that's always going to be our natural tendency, right? Sure. Something that's quantifiable, measurable. Uh, we we understand in our reason lists, rules. It makes sense, logic, right? And that's 100%. good. But uh, that's not the that's not the gospel. The gospel isn't quantifiable, measurable. Uh, thank God, it's immeasurable. Yeah, actually, I was about to say like that. That works Abundance. out really, really well because if it's quantified. Yeah. Like, like sooner or later, you're going to hit that limit. So, so let's, let's be, uh, so wrong questions only then. So this is going to be a law-based question, but, uh, here's, here's, it's, it's almost always phrased in a, a sort of gospel intended way. Sure. So, so pastor, aren't we all God's children anyway? Um, no, uh, <laughs> but, that's uh, a long answer but yeah like you have to let's pick it apart why it sounds so tempting to say yeah, it why yeah, it's let's, let's, and then we, yeah. yeah i think we should deal with the questions the short the quick answer the law answer would be no mm. right i mean that's sure that's true um and again this is one of the mysteries of the faith that we're always trying to figure out we always want to get to the root of why some and not others and that those kinds of questions that uh frankly the bible just doesn't reveal to us Sure. Uh, so we don't know. But when it comes to God's children, what we want to do is is we want to say that everybody's valuable, right? Like that's that's one sense of of maybe how somebody's coming at that question. And and that is and that's a good thing, right? Because sure. everybody's created by God. He made everybody. And yeah. and so that's for sure. The Bible teaches that. It also teaches that he died for everybody. Right. And that's where the value comes from. You were purchased Absolutely. with a price. So and there, there's nobody gold, that Jesus didn't die for. His blood. So ransomed, right? Beautiful. Um, and, and so that's good news. But uh, the reason that we, uh, we preach, the reason that we baptize is so that that gift that Jesus won is brought to a person. It's brought to you. Hmm. Uh, and so our certainty or how we know we're children of God. Um, Paul says this in Galatians, in Christ Jesus, you're in Christ Jesus, you're all children of God through faith, which receives this gift, right? Faith is that sure. which receives the baptism, the promise. Um, maybe look at the example of Abraham in the old Testament. Okay. And like, you know, he wasn't a guy out looking for God. Right. Uh, he, he, yeah, the, he the was, whole circumcision uh, thing was probably not just something you come up with by yourself off the cuff. Yeah, it's, that's um, really, wouldn't that be? Yeah, that's a bad idea. Uh, yeah. so, uh, but the sky talked to him. Yeah, exactly. And and so he gets this promise, right? And God reveals Himself to him with this promise mm -hmm. and says, "You know, I'm going to bless everybody on the entire globe through you, and you're going to have." more descendants than the stars in the sand. Sure. And and it says, and Abram believed, and by faith it was counted to him as righteousness. Right. And that and, and thus he he's a child of God by the word of God, the promise of God coming to him. But then sure. in that sense, Paul uses the same thing and says, just like Abraham, who received this promise by faith, that's how all of us are children of Abraham, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, because of through faith, right? Right. And so we're kind of laying something out. So so every 
person is God's creature because God has made us and and every single person has been uh, died for by Jesus has has been redeemed. But by faith, we are God's children. And I think this is actually an important distinction, not just sort of to to make sure that not too many people sneak into heaven, but but rather actually just you can look around and even the world understands this. So it's it's actually the, the important thing that I think even the the unbelievers can start to recognize is that it, it's it's not great down here. Um, if this is sort of the mark of how a, an all powerful God would would father his children, something's gone askew here. And and they're not wrong. Like if all you have to, to sort of be God's children is this creation, you have to contend with how awful things are down here. And the reality is when we talk about this distinction, it's not so that we're trying to sort of like not let too many people sneak into heaven, but be a little bit more honest that things aren't all right down here because, well, because we broke it in our sin. But but God agrees that it's so wrong that he sends his son into the world to redeem the world, to, to save us from ourselves, from death and hell, and promises the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. And the mark then of being God's child is not just like being really content with what little you get down here until you die, but, but rather God saving you from sin, death, and the devil and bringing you into the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. And, and here you have something more to hold on to than, than just sort of, I'm sure there's a God there. Rather, you actually have the mark of his promises, right? Absolutely. In fact, you have his name. You bear his name if you're baptized. And so how do I know that I'm a child of God? Because he gave me his name. Isn't that what what happens when you're in a family? You bear the family name, if you will. Well, we bear the very name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I he love that. places that on us. And with that name is God himself, hmm. who's with his name, and he's there for our benefit. And so Jesus, with that, uh, when he gives baptism in Matthew 28, also gives the promise that I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Right. And, right. and that's that's how you know you have him, because you have the places he promised, like the baptism. And that really matters when things are falling apart. That really matters when you look at yourself yeah. and you particularly lovable, but also it, it really matters when you look out into the world and realize that we are the ones who God loves enough to want to save. And then you get to sort of take a deep breath because the, the sort of the, the impetus behind, aren't we all God's children anyway, is really just an attempt to be more loving than God. And and that I think might be the real issue, huh? Oh, sure. It, it, I mean, it. Uh, we're, we're always thinking we're so much more virtuous than we are. Uh, and and yet, you know, uh, greater love hath no man than this, than one who laid down his life for his friends, which is what Ooh. Jesus is and did. Uh, he's the one who came to save his people from their sins uh, and to make people who are not his people, his people. <laughs> you once were not a people, Peter says, uh, you but you're now the people of God. Yeah. Uh, again, family, right? So we have this great promise of not only that God loves us, like we said before, and we know that not all are children of God, but that part of what the church is here to do and part of what you and I are here to do, right? Mm -hmm. Those who are in this office uh, of the Holy Spirit, the office of Jesus as pastor to be in his stead, is that we would speak those words uh, to those whom the Lord would send our way and gather to his name. it's that's why we have the church. That's why he hasn't come yet, because more are being gathered in. Sure. And, and building and then, his church. Yeah, that that's great. And, and then when we, we talk about this, it, it's it's God building his church. And it's not sort of us doing the disservice of lying to people and telling them that they're fine apart from the promises of actual salvation, or even just supposed to feel fine with how things look down here, but but rather it's a place where we can look forward to 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 more. Absolutely. No, um, the, you know, the, that one of the things that we, th- we do think that we're trying to do, like you said, we're trying to be more loving than God. Um, but again, th- this is us sort of trying to virtue signal or whatever, whatever to ourselves, uh, maybe to our neighbors and sound loving because we don't want to sound bad, but sometimes, you know, in doing that, uh, in having a distinction between, what's truth and what's false, right? Uh, right? We're actually helping and loving our neighbor by upholding the distinction that the scriptures give and saying, if the Lord puts his name on you, you're his child. Uh, if you resist that, if you refuse that, you're not. And I and, pray and hope that all would be his children, right? Right. 
That's that. That's also not an attempt to make the narrow gate any narrower. It, it's just simply a recognition. Jesus saves, and Jesus is free, and Jesus is for you. So let's do this in a way of certainty, and, and not by how right. you're feeling or how you're doing at any moment, but ba- rather, has Jesus died for you? Is he risen from the grave, and are you baptized? One hundred percent. If we're going to sort of rephrase this, because the, the the bad question is, aren't we all God's children? What's maybe the better question to ask? How do I know I'm God's child? Ooh, I love that. And how so so I how know? do I know? Well, I, I thought about, you know, your question, your, your comment about certainty. That's the thing. Mm. What is not certain is me, my feelings, my mm. emotions. So with the answer to that question, I can't look to myself. I can't look to something I do. Um, because by nature, the scripture says, I'm a child of wrath. I'm not a child of God. I'm born as a sinner against God, against the things of God, resisting unbelief, all that stuff. That's not good. But God, rich in mercy, had mercy on me. And how do I know that? Because he spoke his words of forgiveness to me, because he put his name on me in holy baptism and gave me a promise to wash my sins away, to never leave me or forsake me. Amen. Pastor, thanks so much. Absolutely.